Welcome to another devlog for the tank game I'm making in Godot 3.5. One of the first features I wanted to add to my game was diagonal movement, and the Godot engine makes this actually pretty easy to implement. Using input get action strength, I can get a diagonal vector from keyboard inputs and move my character diagonally using move and slide. For enemy tanks, it's easy to just add the four diagonal movements to their movement options. I then included these diagonal movements when I implemented two different navigation systems for the enemy tanks. These two navigation systems are tile-based. There were a lot of challenges that came with diagonal movement and tile-based navigation, but I coded around these using clever and sometimes kludgy hacks. Even for the player-controlled tank, I had to add a 30 millisecond delay to the user's input to overcome a bug where the player's tank would snap in a different direction when the player stops moving diagonally. If you want to see in-depth technical videos about some of these hacks, I link them in the description box under the like button below. The problem, however, is that after all that, the movement doesn't actually look that good. When there are a lot of players on the screen, it looks chaotic. But even worse is the tanks slide around when they collide. Much of the sliding is because I used the move and slide method for kinematic body 2Ds. Every tutorial I followed when I was learning Godot used move and slide to move characters, so I just reflexively used it in my own game without giving it much thought. Move and slide is great for moving characters in modern 2D games and platformers, but this is really not the look of movement I want for my game, which was originally inspired by a game from 1985. I want blockier, retro looking movement. So I refactored all my movement states and switched everything to using a single function that uses move and collide instead. This eliminated much of the sliding the enemies were doing. However, there was still some sliding that was occurring that I didn't like. This slight sliding was because of a kludgy hack that I had to write to overcome a problem with diagonal movement and tile-based navigation. Consider for example the situation where the enemy tank is on this tile and it needs to go to this HQ tile which is diagonal from its current tile. So its navigation system would tell it to face 45 degrees but it can't just move 45 degrees because if it did that it would end up on the wrong tile the tile to the right of it rather than the tile that it wants to go to, the diagonal tile. So to overcome this, I wrote a kludgy hack where I adjusted the movement so it's actually angled towards the corner of the diagonal tile that it wants to go to. That way, when it starts moving, it, it ends up on the right tile. This creates a new problem, however, where there's a difference between how the tank is moving 47 degrees and how its sprite is facing 45 degrees. That slight difference is what's causing the slight sliding. One way to fix this is to just use the adjusted angle for the sprite, but this allows the enemy tanks to face in angles that the player cannot, because the player is limited to 8-way keyboard movement. And again, I want blocky looking retro style movement. I realize that there's probably a way to do diagonal movement and tile-based navigation without the sliding and without the problem of tanks ending up on the wrong tile while moving diagonally. I suspect the solution is some kind of rail-based movement where the tanks move continuously on a predefined track between tiles. At this point, however, I've decided to just eliminate diagonal movement and reduce my scope because the amount of fun it adds doesn't outweigh the amount of complexity it also adds. So much of my work on this game so far has been to apply kludgy solutions to the problems that come with continuous, tile-based diagonal movement. By reducing scope to just four-way continuous tile-based movement, a lot of things will become simpler. 
therefore, I'll actually have a shot at achieving the original goal of finishing a simple game this year as my first game. It actually took me longer than normal to make the decision to throw away work. I procrastinated a lot on it, and I even took a week off from working on the game because I was feeling tired of it. One of the drawbacks of solo development compared to a regular job where I'm part of a larger software company is I don't have a product manager who is going to force me to keep a feature despite how difficult it is to implement. Or alternatively, there is no committee that's going to be formed that will decide as a committee to ax a feature and reduce scope. As a solo developer, I have to decide by myself if something is worth it or not. But anyway, after a lot of friction, I decided to remove diagonal movement and remove a ton of code that I've written related to it. With that change, the tanks can now only move in four directions, north, south, east, and west. The movement of the whole game altogether looks a lot better in my opinion. It looks a lot more like the original vision I had when I first started. That's going to be it for this devlog. I realize that this is not the traditional kind of devlog where new exciting gameplay elements are added, but I think it's important to share the reality of what solo indie game development is like because other people might be grappling with the same tough decisions too. In any case, if you enjoy solo indie game devlogs, you can subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.